Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the official Baller of the Month interview for the month of February. I'm Wes Peters, uh, Director of League Expansion for the NCDA and head coach of the UC Bearcats. Uh, coincidentally enough, uh, the Baller of the Month from February is a UC Bearcat. So, Corey, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Corey Heitman, everybody. Uh, mid, usual mid player for UC. Um, assistant captain. Uh, so let's jump into it. Uh, so you're the February Ball of the Month, as we just said. Uh, you know, based on yours and you know UC's overall performance at both the ODC and the War. You know, you you the team stood out going six and zero, um, particularly due to your performances. How, how do you feel about being selected? Um, I feel good. Uh, you know, I always like to fly under the radar and not like have my name out there. But I was going to say, if more or less, if people are going to know my name, might as well tell it to everyone and not just a couple people at a time. Um, but there was also I, there was some doubt. Um, I was thinking maybe someone from MSU would get it just because of mm. the performance they had against Grand Valley. Um, sure. But then again, you, I think someone who said like they only played those games. And it was right. like I had more time to get my uh, name under the award. So, yeah, no, I, it feels good, actually. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a really good award to win, especially during the season. I, I got mine in like July or something when I won mine, you know, 18 years ago. Yeah. So and it was felt kind of crappy because I, I feel like I deserve my performance. But so to yeah. get it during the year, yeah, no, is, is a really cool thing. Especially I think. closer to the end of the year as well. So mm -hmm. it just like shows that I'm improving and all. So exactly, and after winning one of the the major cups. So. Oh yeah. Uh, Speaking of our team, you know, who else from UC do you feel, uh, you know, de deserves honors for our team's performance and uh, this season? Um, so I feel like, honestly, everyone, I, I know it's a basic answer, but everyone. It's a top-out um, answer, yeah. More or less, like, I probably, honestly, I don't think I would have won it without the rest of the my team. Um, I figured, more or less, you're looking for names. Uh, I'm going to say. Yeah, who stands out? I'd say Ski, just for his aggressiveness and him being the mirror image of me. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say Brett for leadership, um, and like Brandon for catching Weber for all his clutch moments and helping out. And, um, yeah, I'd say mostly those, those guys are really help step up and take leadership and, um, really help change the momentum of a game. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a team effort for, for the yeah. Bearcats this oh, yeah. year, for sure. Um, so What's the best part of your, in your opinion, about playing dodgeball for UC? You know, what what do you like most about about? The um, honestly, it's the uh, it's the adventures on two tournaments. Um, <laughs> with the with the amount of cars. Uh, this last tournament with the nine people in my passenger van. I mean, I wasn't mm -hmm. driving, but just having uh, all those guys in there and hanging out was was an experience. It was really fun. Um, and I also really enjoy uh, playing other teams and having like enjoying all the other teams. Um, a big favorite of mine, I, I would say is OSU. I like going to any tournament that OSU is just cause I like to connect with them. They're fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, they're just really fun people to hang out with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, switching gears a little bit, you have a soccer goalie background. Uh, when you join, I remember when you joined the team, you were, yep, you're on club, club <laughs> soccer still. Oh yeah. Uh, what made you decide to try dodgeball out and, and then ultimately stick with it, you know, and then how does your soccer background influence your play style in dodgeball so originally i actually played dodgeball at summer camp when i was young uh, in summer they just had this like nine to five kind of camp dealio that i would go to and dodgeball was was the sport it was either dodgeball or kickball and everyone voted dodgeball and so i got my and my when i saw it at the club fair i was like oh i used to play this when i was a kid like this is awesome this was so fun so I signed up and I was like, oh, maybe it's maybe it'll be a big thing. And then I got an email from you. I was like, oh, wow, it actually is a big thing. And so mm -hmm. I came to practice and I just stuck with it because it, I don't know, it's just something something that got me excited. Um, and then with the soccer experience, I was a goalie. So I, um, you know, I'm, I'm good at the catching aspect, or at least I like to think I am. Um, and every every time I catch, like I look back and it's like, I'm just doing like repeating my goalie catches like. Uh, using my body to absorb the ball and like when i'm not using my body i'll like i'll catch with a w in my hand and i look down it's like oh this this goes right back to soccer like right and i mean i still play it so it it you know it helps practice with that as well mm -hmm. what about your throwing form i mean it's like straight down over the top is that how you throw a soccer ball too as a goalie 
Oh yeah. That's a hundred percent. I, my coach told me that I have to throw the ball at 12 to six motion. And that's just mm -hmm. the way I would get that 12 to six. Cause I would throw at an angle and it wouldn't get that. And mm -hmm. I was drilled in my head, uh, 12, six. So I just figured start throwing it over the top. And it also probably helped a little bit that I played outfield with my crow hop and all that, that I just like mm -hmm. over the top, get as much power as behind it. I can and, um, see where it goes, I guess. No, it makes sense. It's led to a lot of easy transition oh, yeah. kills for you oh, with yeah. that form. Cause a lot of people expect the sidearm or, you know, the, the side the angle, quick side, the quick side throw, yeah. but no, I, at least with mine, I get, I get some power behind it and it starts high and goes low quick instead of just yeah. like this slow angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so historically you've been, you've anchored this, the mid court for UC, you know, ski has kind yeah. of joined you in that regard, especially this year. Um, so with that, with Brett out at the war, how, you know, and you kind of took over the right side, how yeah. did that force you to adjust and you know, how, what was that like? I honestly, I think it helped a lot. Um, with me being in the middle, I had to worry about every side of me, which mm -hmm. not going to lie, was really fun. I, I liked the, um, random throws that were coming in the, just like the uncertainty of everything. But with the, me on the right side, it, I only had to stare at the kid in front of me and the guys to the right. left. And I had Luke who was a big help blocking from the left and supporting. Mm -hmm. So more or less, I just had to worry about the guy in front of me instead of just all over the court. And that was, it was a, it was a good adjustment. And I think that uh, going forward, I might lean right at this point. You think so? Yeah. I think, Especially I, with Brett being back. What do you, how do you think that's yeah, going to go? Um, Brett will take, I think what will happen is I feel like I'll talk with him about it, but I'll get the counters. And when he wants to set up team throws, He's got that, mm. and I'll lean and I'll block in the middle and catch. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so looking forward to nationals. Uh, do you have any? You know, what expectations do you have for yourself for the team? You know, um, what makes you nervous about playing in a big tournament like that? Being a, one of the favorite teams to I win. I say I am a big anxious person. I have a lot of anxiety, so when it comes to those kind of games, it's like, oh god, like, are we gonna win? But I settle myself down. I I t talk it out. Um, I'd say as a player i the expectation is just to keep going forward keep you know pushing being the best player that there is um and as a team i would say if we were lower um that would be like just to cause an upset but being obviously one of the best teams um i'd say championship game or bus kind of dealio um get there show our name show what we've done um and prove to people that we are one of the best teams if not the best team in the league mm -hmm. do you think we're gonna win I, I'm going to say yes, just because uh, you might <laughs> I feel like you're going to have some uh, questions after. So, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> good <we're> answer. <laughs> uh, OK, so league wide and like going forward, you know, beyond this year, what do you think is the biggest change you'd like to see the, the league make? Um, I know it's hard with certain courts, but wall ball mm. is uh, it's just kind of painful. Uh, yeah. Really, I guess it's just because of how we play, but we play fast. And with wall ball, it's, it slows the game down. And honestly, it, it puts me to sleep sometimes. I just, I can't yeah. do it. I like the rule of the two balls. That really helps, I guess, stop it. Um, but if it if it's not going to be the obvious wall ball answer, it's um, try to get more refs, I would say. There's a lot of people who aren't honest in their mm -hmm. things. And it just helps with, you know, making sure people are on check. Like um, Peter had to call out his own players a couple times at MDC because they – walked in on that out of bounds line and i know as a ref i missed that a couple times but it's just like if we had more people to like enforce those it it helped mm -hmm. make a more strict league a more rule abiding league and i feel like it, it helped the league a lot what do you think like more than four refs would be ideal like do you want like backline I, yeah i'd say or... like a backline ref to help watch those like out of bounds make sure people's hands mm -hmm. are in and stuff and so like um just in case like a, a side ref misses them like landing with the right foot out and then their left foot in a backline mm. ref would be helping watch those, uh, the boundary lines. Okay. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. We do that at nationals usually for the championship game, just yeah. cause we have a lot of alumni there and, oh, and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, just the, you know, random tournament here or there, it's not been a priority to really get yeah. more than three to four refs, but, um, let's see one thing you'd like to see more of league wide or unless that's kind of the same answer you've got. Um, more of i don't know i i guess with rules i'd say like more i'd say more refs but more i'd um with teams i'd like to see more teams at tournaments like that's mm -hmm. that's the whole reason i, I love tournaments just because i talk to 
people from Wisconsin, from Michigan, from Maryland and all that stuff. And it's just fun to like see them all come together and talk and hang out with them. Yeah. No, I hear that. Uh, all right. What's your go-to meal for dodgeball road trips and why is it Wendy's? Um, so that's, that's, I say for the people that don't know, it's more of a inside joke. We'd always go to Wendy's. It was just such a neutral ground. Uh, <laughs> first of all, no one likes Arby's or Burger King. So those are clearly out of the option. Oh, that's hot um, takes. But, and I was picky. So I didn't go to Chipotle first couple of years because I was just weird and dumb. Um, and then, you know, Wendy's was just so good. It was just such a neutral ground. It had everything you wanted, burgers, chicken. It just And I would say Chick-fil-A was our backup, but mm -hmm. some people didn't want chicken at times. So it was just like, oh, True. it's also like, who wouldn't love the four for four, right? True. Four dollars for, good four for a four. whole meal. And if you're hungry, still get another. Yeah. Wendy's, ski. if you're watching this, sponsor us. Um, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I I know. Ski loves it too. We we mm -hmm. we even go sometimes just on the side, just get four for fours, like two of them, <laughs> sit there and eat. So it's bad, but it's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, shout out to Brandon and his baked potato, by the way. Oh, the baked potato, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, that was that was funny. <laughs> the only thing he'll order from there. All right, uh, just wrapping up now. It's been fun. Um, but you wear number fourteen. Why? Um, honestly, I was I was probably a dumb kid, but when I was uh when I was young, I heard number thirteen was an unlucky number. And at least this is from what I can remember, but I always thought it's like, oh, 14 is the first number after 13. That's it's got to be a lucky number, right? So I True. I picked it when I was, what, four or five. And then I just wrote it out because I don't know. I was I always picked it when I could. Um, in baseball, when I was younger, we couldn't get 14, so I'd stick with four. And it's just something with the number four in it. I don't know any number that has that. I can pick it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, and honestly, that's that's just what I'm going to go with because I, no, I have no other reason why I picked 14. <laughs> No, I, I, I always just enjoy hearing, you know, oh, why yeah. people pick the number that they wear and, you know, the reason behind it. So everyone's got a different uh, oh, yeah. tale it's for it. Just random. Mm -hmm. But uh, All right, Corey, that's all the questions I got for you today for Baller of the Month. Uh, any parting shots, lasting com last comments, anything like that? I uh, hope to see uh, the three teams that said they'd come to UC to come down and have a good time. Oh. True. Shout out to our uh, turn home tournament on the 26th, the uh, Clifton Heights Classic. Oh, yeah. All right, Corey. I'll see you at practice. Oh, yeah. See you then. All right.